Ah, oh, g'day, welcome to Farming Live Australia. I've been having a bit of trouble. Well, not a bit of trouble. I've been having trouble with air compressors for 20 years. And the reason I think I've been having trouble is because we live on a farm and out in the country and we have what they call single earth return our electricity for some reason and I'm, I'm blaming that but I don't really know it just keeps blowing the motors up on compressors and let me tell you I'm getting a bit sick of it anyway I, I've done a few things to try and get around the problem first thing I did in frustration was go and buy a petrol driven compressor and that works okay and it's portable but Jesus it's noisy and some of you know that in my spare time I build sculptures and some big ones. I use a lot of air plasma cutting, spray painting, air tools. You know, even if you only pump up a tyre, you need a compressor. So here's the shiny new box, and let's hope the compressor's in there. I'm sure it is. Now, one reason I bought this compressor in particular is because it's direct drive, and I've found here that is one thing that will work. Belt driven compressors seem to blow the motors up, but direct drive compressors seem okay. Well here it is in all its glory. It looks like I've got to put the wheels on it and the handle. And one thing I notice about it, it's got four wheels. Not two like a lot of compressors. So that should be good to move around the workshop. So here's the particular type and model of compressor that I got. But you can get them from really small ones right up to a lot bigger ones than this. You'll notice that each compressor has its own switch. So you can just turn one on or two on or three on. These wheels really surprise me. They're really solid wheel and they've actually got bearings inside them. You wouldn't normally see bearings in a wheel of this size so it all looks really good quality so far. With the wheels I put a bit of grease on the bearings then you just slip the wheels on and they have a bolt and a big washer that retains the wheel that you do up tight. It has a handle that comes with it that you put on and that's to lead it round by its wheels so you can wheel it in different parts of your workshop or wherever you need to use it. A friend of mine owns one of these compressors and he does a lot of spray painting and he's owned it for five years and had no trouble so I was fairly confident in the unit before I bought it. I'm just wheeling it along our gravel in front of the house and as you can see it wheels really easily. Well that's how noisy it is. You can see here on the left hand side of your screen it is starting to get air pressure. It's now cut out and you can see that it's on about 118 pounds. I suppose I should talk about some of the features of this compressor and a little bit more detail about it. The compressor does come with a manual that outlines the safety features and things you need to be aware of. The compressor is compliant with Australian regulations and workplace health and safety requirements. One thing I should have mentioned earlier, I'm not getting paid to do this review. I've got no financial interest in Sydney Tools and I'm not getting any remuneration for making this video. I only make these videos purely for people to have information about what tools I find good, bad or indifferent. I'm going to talk about some of the features of this compressor. Now it's oilless, which means it has no oil in the sump and it's direct drive. Being direct drive is important in our area because we've had so many failures with the electric motors on normal belt driven compressors. And I'm sure this is only down to our rural power because I've got friends 600 kilometres away who live in the country and they've got exactly the same problem. Everyone I know around here is blowing up their belt drive compressor. It's not the fault of the compressors. I'm not saying that belt drive compressors are crook or anything like that. It's just an idiosyncrasy with our particular power system. What does oilless really mean to me? When you compress air with a normal compressor, a certain amount of the oil out of the sump gets in the air. Now, it could be really slight. If the compressor's worn, it could be fairly severe. 
And for things like plasma cutting or spray painting, oil in your air is not a good thing. And sure, you can put heaps of filters on and get it out, but it's just one less thing that I have to consider. The compressor has three pumps on it with a motor on each pump. Each pump has two cylinders, so in total there's six cylinders pumping to pump up the air in the compressor. In my case, with three different pumps, you can use one, two or three compressors running at once. The electrical motors are 1.1 horsepower each, uh, which gives you a total of 3.3 horsepower. Like all modern compressors, you just switch the unit on. It pumps up to a preset pressure, it cuts out, and when the air gets down to a preset pressure, it starts up again. You don't have to turn it on and off, which I guess is pretty obvious. Maybe not if you're a complete new hand to compressors. One thing that attracted me to this compressor is its noise level. And I did have it running earlier when I was talking, but that really doesn't give you an accurate idea of how noisy it is. It's sitting right beside me, and I've got my old direct drive compressor, which is just a little two horsepower El Cheapo job beside it, producing about a third the air. And I'm going to start that up and run it so you can hear the difference in the noise. Now that running after a while will really drive them up, and it does. Oh, thank God that stopped. Now you can hear my new one running and I'm sure you can notice a huge difference. I haven't moved the camera. It's in exactly the same place. In fact, it's slightly closer to the Hush 100 than it is to the El Cheapo compressor. So it does have a manual switch that you can stop and start. And it hasn't started up now simply because the air is above the lower pressure point. It comes with two pretty standard gauges that you see on most compressors nowadays and a water trap down here and also an air regulator and an outlet fitting. The compressors are mounted on rubber blocks which helps to take away noise and vibration from the rest of the machine. The compressor is suitable for any sort of normal job that any other compressor is, as long as the air required is not more than the unit can produce, including pneumatic tools, spray painting, of course pumping up tyres, nail guns, virtually anything that any other compressor can supply air for. Now there's a one year warranty on the pump and five years warranty on the tank. I just thought I'd do a quick demonstration of a couple of things that it's good for. And here I'm using a needle gun, clean rust off steel. And as you can see it supplies plenty of air for this, it's not a problem. This thing is fairly hungry on air. Here I'm just dusting off the bench with the air blower, runs this no worries. I really can't see it being any sort of a problem running anything, spray painting or whatever. Well there you are, we've seen her in action, all works good. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Life Australia, we'll see you next time.